Okay, we didn't record any of that, which is okay. <laughs> That's okay. Um, maybe I should do another session at some point to talk about the new place and how it feels to settle. Maybe a Dhamma talk of some kind or just a, a discussion together. But I think the best thing is, you know, a place becomes a monastery when people start to come there and we start to make memories together. Like we start to have a certain um, association with the place and association of practice and spiritual friendship. That's when it starts to feel like it comes alive. But I have to say that even, you know, though obviously we've only been there a week, right? This time last week, we were still like literally unpacking boxes. In fact, right until yesterday, there's still one box at least. Um but it already has a peaceful atmosphere. And that's what attracted me to the place. Like there's a sense of being away from the kind of hurried hassle of life and being on a man, well, a hilltop, let's say, uh, with forest around. So it definitely has a very quiet and peaceful energy and a lot of spaciousness and light. So having said that, let's... Uh, Prepare ourselves for some meditation by just settling into our body, first of all. And maybe just having a couple of moments silence to land. And during this time, really asking your body what you can do to make it more comfortable, to give your body the opportunity to relax. Noticing where any residual tension is being held in your back or your shoulders. Maybe in your tummy. Maybe you've been breathing into your chest. Allowing the breathing to drop down into your belly. Perhaps to allow a few deeper breaths in and breathing out deeply through your mouth. As so though you're sighing, this is what I need anyway. And that sigh could become a yawn. And perhaps setting our intention, setting up a friendly relationship with our body and mind. We're gently welcoming your body into this space. Your own space where you're seated right now and also this shared space. Sensing the presence of so many spiritual friends, some known, some unknown. Coming together to spread intentions of loving kindness. To learn to have a more beautiful, wholesome relationship with ourselves, with our bodies and minds and emotional worlds. and a more beautiful, wholesome relationship with one another too. And all beings in your life. Just that intention alone is the beginnings, the flourishing of metta. And see if you can gently start to sense your body, any feelings that arise, any sensations. <clears throat> And 
And allow those sensations to bring your body and mind into this present moment. Sensations are always happening now. Something that can be directly felt, directly experienced. Without the need for words or labels, descriptions or evaluations. Just meeting those sensations with friendship, with warmth, and a sense of curiosity. Allowing them to bring the mind into this direct experience of now. As though the rest of your life is just falling away past is the past, done with just a memory. And the future is being created right now. To be experienced as the present moment always new, always fresh. And perhaps just allowing your awareness to linger in any areas of your body But could do with that a little bit more care, more attention, perhaps like me, your tummy. It's a little bit uh, wobbly or sore. Maybe there's tension in a particular area, perhaps an old injury maybe a disease, just see what kind of attention can help you to meet that feeling in a soothing and compassionate way. Perhaps just hovering lightly around that area. Or staying with your extremities some part of the body that feels fairly neutral or pleasant. Allowing things to settle. And if you wish to continue with this kindfulness, this beautiful attitude and relationship with your body and mind as a form of loving kindness, please do so. Or if you wish, we can begin to generate feelings, thoughts, intentions of loving kindness towards ourselves. Regarding ourselves with kindly eyes, the way perhaps a person who loves us would regard us. With a sense of sympathy, yeah. friendship, understanding, warmth.
perhaps it might help to remember a time you were regarded in this way, how it feels to be with a good friend or maybe even a wise teacher. Someone who personifies love. See if you can regard yourself in just the same way. The way a wise and compassionate being or friend would regard you with nothing but your welfare in mind. Perhaps they would even express those wishes verbally. Let's see if any phrases come to mind that can help you to connect with a sense of loving kindness towards yourself. Phrases such as, may I be happy. May I be safe. May I be peaceful. May I be at ease. Perhaps you have your own phrases of loving kindness that resonate for you. Maybe you wish yourself contentment, health, ease, well-being, whatever feels really genuine, really sincere and appropriate at this time. And when we repeat these phrases inside our mind, we do so with genuine feeling, a sense of the meaning, as though offering ourselves a gift. And then staying very present to our bodies and our minds, connecting with the feelings perhaps around the chest or any place that feels fairly pleasant. It's not difficult to dwell with. We just listen to the reverberations of those wishes and allow the mind to follow in that direction. before planting the next seed, the next phrase. So just experiment with how frequently you wish to recite these phrases or whether that's helpful at all. And just pause in between with an attitude of kindness, listening deeply the mind's response. Without expecting or demanding any particular experience, just being kind to whatever arises in your body or mind.
and see if you can allow yourself to just enjoy this process of offering yourself good wishes without any force. It simply is a beautiful thing to do. Noticing if there's a resistance to this, which is perfectly natural and normal. And allowing that in too. Just softening to whatever arises and allowing it space. And maintaining this kind intention towards yourself.
Once again, connecting with any feelings that are arising in relation to this loving kindness that may be pleasant, perhaps a sense of softness or lightness, spaciousness, warmth. And allowing this feeling to spread as though washing over your whole body and mind. Wherever you send your mind, wherever the mind naturally flows, it carries along this feeling of lightness, warmth, or maybe just a general feeling of slightly more ease than when you began. Perhaps there's nothing you might define as particularly pleasant. In this case, just see if you notice any subtle sensations anywhere. And allow them to spread and to move even beyond your body. Spreading outwards and unbounded in front of your body, first of all, to all beings in that direction, wherever you're facing right now, all beings. Maybe in front. Perhaps in the same room or house, neighborhood. Perhaps certain beings pop into your mind or just a general sense of meta flowing outwards and unbounded from your heart and into the world for all beings in that direction. as far as it flows. Carrying with it the energy, the emotion, the intention of loving kindness, a feeling of safety and peace. Likewise, expanding, continuing to expand outwards towards your right side. Outwards and unbounded, without hostility, without holding. Feelings of benevolence, kindness to all beings in that direction. Human beings and animals, insects and birds, those beneath the earth or in the water, seas, even invisible beings, wherever there's life, just allowing this matter to flow. Spreading to include the area behind your body. For all beings dwelling in that direction. The metta becoming abundant, exalted, immeasurable.
spreading to all beings, all beings who breathe wherever there's life. Likewise, to all beings on your left side, in that direction. So that all four quarters are covered. All beings who dwell to your left. Imagining this matter just spreading towards them. Imbuing them with feelings of safety, of peace, of goodwill of ease. And allowing the metta to flow downward also to any beings dwelling underneath the ground or maybe all the way through to the other side of the earth. Spreading downwards measurably. Sending messages of peace. And upwards to the skies, to any beings dwelling above, in every direction. Until this meta is spreading, suffusing all beings everywhere. No area untouched by its warmth, by its peace, its goodwill. And just staying with this perception, the idea, perhaps the feeling of this huge, spacious, benevolent mind that goes beyond you, beyond any sense of limitation and just spreads wherever this meta is needed. For all beings everywhere. Meta sagate na jeta sa ekam desam paritva viharati tata titiyam tata tatiyam tata Chatutam idiyadamato tiriyan sabarisa patataya sabha 
Vantam Lokam Meta Sagatena Chetasa Vipulena Mahagatena Apamane Avevena Abhya Pajena Paripwa Viharati I will abide Pervading one quarter with a mind imbued with loving kindness, likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth, so above and below, around and everywhere. And to all as to myself, I will abide, pervading the all-encompassing world, with a mind imbued with loving kindness, abundant, exalted, immeasurable. Without hostility and without ill will. Stay with a sense of abundant loving kindness spreading in every direction to all as to yourself. And then very gently, in your own time, allowing your awareness to gently come back into the room where you're sitting, leaving the warmth, the glow, the peace outside, but gently moving back in to your space, to your body. back into your heart to the source of this beautiful loving kindness to this beautiful motivation this intention the kindness of friendship of love Gently smiling, smiling into your heart, expressing that feeling of friendship and warmth to yourself, whatever happened in your meditation. For the fact that you tried, you showed up, you took a few more steps on this path. So just ending with a sense of friendship and gratitude and respect towards yourself. That's even giving yourself a hug. Even Ajahn Brown does that. He sometimes pats himself on the head. <laughs> yeah, well done. Someone did it. I don't mind doing it because if I move my hand forward, it's very soft. If I move it backwards, it's kind of spiky. If I move it forward, it's quite soft. <laughs> My little niece and nephew, when they were young, if my hair's quite short, you know, because it's stubbly, they'd move it, they'd put their hand forward, they go, ah, la, la, and then they'd put their hand back. <laughs> they'd pretend it was really spiky. Ah. <laughs> it was really cute. <laughs> and then they steal my beanie and run off with it. That still they do that and they're like 12 and 14. They think it's great fun to steal my beanie and like run all over the place with it. <laughs> so anyway, giving yourself a little hug. 
and uh, ending with a smile. So, yeah. Sometimes when I give myself a hug, I realize my shoulders need a massage. They're really kind of achy and tight, so you might want to do that as well. Or just rub your limbs, stretch your limbs, and uh, somehow I've timed it so that, you know, another one actually is that you can um, rub on the back of your neck if you kind of, you can do it either side, but you can also do it in the middle with one hand, and this is really good for the vagus nerve. It gets the vagus nerve kind of warmed up and that sends messages to your nervous system to relax. It's quite nice, isn't it? You can also do it down the side of the neck, but be careful if you have low blood pressure. Do it sitting down because you can kind of come down like this on one side. It can actually reduce the blood pressure so you get a bit dizzy. I mean, that's never happened to me, but you never know. This is it also feels really nice. If you go over your ear, it even gets more points. <laughs> Shell's giggling. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I think it's quite nice. Ah, it wakes you up. So we still have time for a few uh, comments, questions, sharing, if you wish. So anyone would like to share their experience or any questions or anything that's even happened to you this week that you'd like to share with the group or have some support or clarity on, please uh, feel free to raise your, your virtual hand. If you prefer that your voice is not recorded, it'll only be your voice. Uh, I've just been recorded doing all kinds of weird things to my neck, so, you know. You lose the fear. But anyway, your only my picture is there. Um, otherwise, you can ask in the box. So someone here has asked how to practice kindness in daily life, e.g. during work. Thank you for the wonderful meditation. Yeah, there's so many ways to practice kindness during work. Sometimes the first thing is to give yourself a break, <laughs> to go to the toilet for an extended number, whatever. It's just a number rest. <laughs> you go in there and you take some time, you do some stretching, you give yourself some words of appreciation. Hey, you know you're doing really well. Um, it's quite a tough day today. Yeah, no wonder I'm feeling a little bit stressed, like... You know, just take a few deep breaths and uh, get yourself kind of, you know, encouraged to go back. And um, another way that's really important is to see your work itself as an act of kindness, to see that whatever you're doing, you know, whatever it is, even if it seems to be the most mundane thing, we had a guest staying with us who is, um, uh, what does she call herself, a designer, but she designs like buttons on vacuum cleaners and things like that. <laughs> So it seems like kind of, okay, maybe there's not a lot of joy in that, but there's so much joy because then she knows that when someone's using the vacuum cleaner, they can switch it on and it doesn't stress them out, you know, and you can put a lot of care and attention into it. So this is your gift, you know, there's people, every single thing we use has been designed carefully by somebody. Just the noise, it's okay. Carefully by somebody and, uh, and uh, you know, it, it matters. It really matters. So whatever you're doing matters. And you can always find ways to bring more care into, into your work. Um, another way is if you happen to have difficult feelings or um, relationship with some people, is to try and look at their good qualities instead of looking for their faults. Because we, especially with people we work with regularly or live with regularly, we start to kind of create a kind of caricature of that person <laughs> you know we kind of focus on the main most outstanding features and then that's all we see but we can look around that at other nuances of that person keep our mind open to other attributes they might have and see if you can engage with those and encourage those in that person kind of almost overlooking their faults so there are a few different ways so look after yourself Fine. A joy in your motivation and in what you do and how you do it bring kindness to that and also see if you can regard the people around you in a positive way and thank you very much Anda, for the lovely meditation today and uh, 
um, it was really nice and I'm sure all of us enjoyed it. And um, in line with the Buddhist tradition, all these teachings are freely offered and uh, you can even meditate later in the YouTube and there's no cost for these things and Venerable Chanda and uh, visible and invisible organizers, helpers like, run this program free of charge, these and the sutta discussions and silent meditations. Um, yeah, so if you are able to donate, please do. Um, um, I'll put the link there. Um, also, uh, if you can do a standing order, even if it is a price of a coffee, that is um, very much appreciated. And as Venerable um, said in, earlier, you know, that it is we've gone to a new monastery and uh, there's a, a few things to fix up there and uh, make it into a monastery that, um, you know, the bhikkhunis can get trained in the future and uh, do all these uh, teachings as well. Uh, so, so I'm very grateful if you can go to the anukampaproject.org and uh, donate. And also when you are in that uh, website, you can see the event page. There's a few events, very interesting events coming, and there is an online uh, retreat done by Venerable and Ajahn Brahm, and uh, Ajahn Brahmali is coming. There are talks as well, um, and you can see the regular events. And uh, keep on looking that, and it updates. And if you are not um, joined so far, join the new uh, newsletter, so you'll get... Um, once in once a month or once in every few months, a newsletter personally from Verba with all the uh, events and the uh, regular and the uh, you know the regular and the, the special events as well as what is happening in the monastery. Mm -hmm. and thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you so much, Manoi. Amazingly clear, considering you're jet lagged and <laughs> really inviting. And uh, in the newsletter, actually, we also invite anybody else to contribute what they, um, uh, yeah, any experience they have really with this community. So sometimes other people write a, a little draft in there. Um, there's also a gift list at the moment happening, but it's almost every time we put something on that gift list, which is um, one of my um, long term guests is, is organizing that people keep on offering things. It's just overwhelming how much generosity and kindness is, and support is there. Um, the other thing is that there are two day retreats in May. One is in Oxford on the 11th. Uh, organized by Oxford Insight. It's on our website, but it will take you to their Oxford Insight page. And there's one in Bristol on the 18th of May uh, by Bristol Insight. And I think Oxford Insight, it's only called a day of practice because they didn't ask me for a theme. So it's kind of like, could be anything, who knows. Uh, Bristol is about death and dying, which I've never taught about before, but I think it's a very interesting and quite, paradoxically uplifting subject uh so that's happening on the 18th of may um i'll be in norway in april for 10 days i think that retreats full up i guess Minori and matthias are joining me uh so that's going to be lovely that's like a, a longer retreat but there'll be more coming up as Minori said and uh yeah next week hopefully we'll be able to zoom from the new place so the regular events, Friday sutras and Saturday meditation will happen. There is one last question in the box. And if anyone can just stay on a couple of moments, I can try to have a go. I'm honestly not sure I understand the question very well. Um, but I'm thinking that what you're saying is that one kind of meta took you lower in the body. And I'm not, maybe you meant the beginning part of the meta, the meta presentates. It could mean the beginning part of the meta, how we began, perhaps. or And then, yeah, that took you lower down in the body. It was more embodied. It was more grounded. And then, particularly with ease and peace and with happiness and love, it brought you higher. Now, what I'm thinking there is that um, sometimes the words have a different emotional quality. So perhaps that's to do with that. Um, happiness might have a sort of higher frequency, I don't know. 
um, and a feeling of love is also very joyful. So it could be that that feels more elevated somehow. Basically, though, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter if, you know, where the meta is located. Quite often it seems to be located or start off around the chest. Other times it can be very grounding. I think meta and love and all of these Brahma Viharas have their own wisdom. And in a sense, they manifest just as they are needed at any given time. Um, you've said it was in the last part. Again, I'm not really sure what you mean there, but um, yeah, it's all good. It's all good, you know. It happens naturally. It happens as it needs to at any given time, and it will be different every time for different people. So there's no right or wrong here, but the fact that you're feeling it and the fact that, you know, you felt that um, ease and peace and um, hopefully a sense of... Um, expansiveness happiness love this is really great and even if we don't that doesn't matter uh because planting seeds is like the intentions it's like doing the hard yards if you like sort of uh tilling the soil and you know the meta flourishes in its own time with the feeling with the attitude that sort of manifests more in day-to-day -day life so just in answer to Gloria's question again, the other way to uh, apply metta in daily life is to practice metta on the cushion. And then you'll start to find that it changes the quality of your mind over time, very subtly at first, but it will change the quality. And uh, you'll just find that thoughts of loving kindness come up more naturally when they're needed, including thoughts of loving kindness to yourself. So great. I'm glad that um, you enjoyed that and you uh, were feeling good. The people who've commented. And if not, don't worry. <laughs> As Ajahn Pram always says, the check is in the post. So, <laughs> okay. I'm sorry that I didn't really understand the exact details of your question, Art, but I hope that um, I covered something. Yeah, the general gist and the important bit, which is... Uh, that it's all wonderful and it's great that you're noticing all those nuances as well. Great. All right, so we can uh, unmute and wave goodbye.